ahead and and get started. So thank you everyone for taking the time out of your busy days to join our really exciting session today. My name is Harpreet Paul and I serve as the academic chair of pediatrics at Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine and also Cahope Nanian Children's Hospital at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. Uh, we have a really important event today related to New Jersey Inc. I also wanna thank our partners at the NJAAP. Um, the speakers you're gonna hear from today are the leaders of NJ Integrated Care for Kids. NJ Inc. is a program designed to support children who have Medicaid, and these children may have uh, medical and social health care needs. Uh, the program helps these families and children identify and access community-based resources. Today's discussion is going to help all of you understand how to best access NJ Inc. and how to use this program in your practice. We're gonna review the innovative program, the value it can bring to your practice and how uh, ultimately we strongly believe that it improves the care of kids uh, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, it's gonna be focused on Monmouth and Ocean Counties and you'll learn a little bit more about that today as well. The speakers for today include Dr. Stephen Carries, who is the principal investigator of uh, NJ Inc. And he's at Cahope Nadian Children's Hospital. We have Jennifer Sharp, who's the NJ Inc. project leader from the VNA Health Group. We have Dr. Melissa Wallach, who is a pediatrician at Hackensack Meridian Children's Health in Asbury Park in Neptune. We have Dr. Kristen Atienza at Neptune Pediatrics, also from Hackensack Meridian Children's Health. And um, I think that all of you are gonna be in for an exceptional treat today. The session is gonna be recorded and we will send this, all, uh, this recording to all of you after the event. So enjoy yourselves, ask a lot of questions and um, I'm going to turn this over to uh, you, Dr. Carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paul. I have the uh, next slide. So Integrated Care for Kids is a project that comes out of the federal government. It's uh, a seven-year project. There's six other states that are involved with this project. In New Jersey, the project is being piloted in two counties, Monmouth and Ocean Counties, and even just in those two counties, there's 150,000 children, zero to age 21, who are part of a Medicaid CHIP, which in New Jersey is called New Jersey Family Care. There's a multiple uh, agencies involved with making this work. Uh, Hackensack Meridian Health is a lead organization, but we are, we're partners with state Medicaid, with the VNA of Central Jersey, and with uh, New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute. And we get additional support from the New Jersey Academy of Pediatrics and from the Central Jersey Family Health Consortium. So a, a great team of people working to make a difference. Um, the, the, the vision of the federal government with this product is to provide services that improve the health and outcome for children that receive New Jersey Family Care or Medicaid in other states. The goal is uh, really two has two aims. The first is on a population base to try to improve the quality of care that all children in Medicaid receive by having well child care that includes enhanced, enhanced screenings for behavioral health, for social determinants, for adverse childhood experience, in addition to the, the usual sorts of care provided through the early period, periodic screening and diagnostic well child program run by the by the state and by Medicaid. And for those children that have complex needs, and we'll, that will be defined later, complex medical needs, behavioral needs, and social needs, then they will receive additional services. Uh, and that includes new care management services by, by new, new teams of people working with them. That's a particularly exciting part of the program. And you also learn much more about that in just a few minutes. The care management teams that we're providing are, are actually paid for by the state by an alternative payment model that supports the community health workers, the family support people, the child life people that are providing the actual care management for these children with complex needs. Uh, next slide. The hope is obviously to improve outcomes and improve health 
care and health of children. But we hope also that if we do it properly, that there's actually a at least a reduction in some of the costs that Medicaid currently pays for at the state level. Uh, a lot of these children have such complex needs that they're in the ED all the time, in the hospital all the time, sometimes in out-of-home placements and residential programs and needing high cost drugs. The hope is that there also will be some cost savings perhaps by providing much better, well-coordinated care for children with complex needs. Uh, next slide. So the vision is to uh, to do better than what we're currently doing. There's a lot of services now for children in New Jersey. Uh, they're, they're usually in silos, people not talking with each other, often very separate from, from what's happening in the healthcare arena. And our goal is to, is to not only provide additional services, but to break down the silos and make sure there's no duplication in the care of those children. The idea is to have a circle of care that works with families uh, to provide those sorts of services. Next slide. At the heart of all this is the family. And this only works if the families see this as a real benefit to themselves. This is a voluntary program. They do not have to join. But if they join, the hope is that they, they really greatly, we can help them greatly improve the care of, uh, of their children and improve their family functioning and hopefully even reduce parental stress by, by providing that sort of family supports. But there's a whole range of families services that are available. There's a whole bunch of core child health services that are available. And our hope is that by having this, uh, this circle of care and this coordinated care system that we will provide a much better process and project support for these families. The idea is to have a partnership council, which we do have, of having all these core child health services working together with us, communicating, sharing, making sure that the physicians remain in medical home for these children, have this done in a way that it is truly coordinated across the board. Next slide. So again, the vision is that we do this together. Right now, there is a lot, as I said, a lot of services are not connected, that are duplicative. Families are often not at the center of the service system. And our hope is that all these tremendous supports that could happen for families by being partners with us, by working with our community partners, by having the healthcare team work together, together we can make a big difference for families and particularly for children with complex needs. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, to Jennifer to talk more about the actual project. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Sharp, the Inc. Project Leader for uh, through the VNA. Um, Inc. is a very unique program, and I'll piggyback off of what Dr. Carey said. Uh, the healthcare system works in silos at times, and so do the community resources. So imagine being that family trying to navigate through all that. And what we do is help them navigate and connect to these resources, find out what's available. Um, it's a comprehensive program. It, it touches on all aspects of the child's life as well as the families, um, whether it be with food assistance, housing assistance, legal assistance, you name it, we're out there searching for it and getting them set up to, to receive these services. Next slide, please. So this, there's a lot of information on this side, but I'm going to just kind of go briefly go through how this works and how you can access ink for your families and for, the, for your children. Uh, so when the referral form is sent into us, we call it the interest form. It's a really simple process. It's just high level demographics. Uh, you scan a QR code or, or go to the website and click the contact me uh, link and it will automatically launch this assessment that actually measures social and behavioral complexity. We already know there's a diagnosis or you wouldn't be referring to us. So we wanna kind of measure the child as a whole. Uh, once that uh, assessment's completed, they get assigned a level of care. There's three levels. Uh, level one is our lowest need, level three being our highest, and of course, level two being in the middle. Uh, the level ones we will monitor and reassess as needed, um, but they we basically send the, the assessment over to you uh, as physicians or providers or schools or wherever the referral came from. And if there's a need to have a conversation, maybe if you disagree, maybe still some of the questions weren't answered appropriately, we can certainly have that conversation. Um, but I wanna like highlight at this point, 
in a children's in children's lives so much can change within a matter of weeks months or years right so feel free if you want to have them reassess at any point we'll, we certainly will send that out again and see if they're eligible for our advanced care management team so the advanced care management team they are the team that actually provides the services our care integration managers actually initiate the care plan the care, the care management team will follow every month and touch base with that family and see if the needs have changed, see if their goals have changed. I want everyone to keep in mind too, this is a very family-driven care plan. They are very much interactive with the development of that care plan. The success and failure of it, maybe their tasks change, maybe their goals change, you know, a lot can happen. Um, it's all generated through an algorithm that we uh, uh, generate in our software system. Um, the other notable thing here, just because a child has a medical diagnosis does not mean they necessarily have social complexities or behavioral complexities. So they can be very happy, well-adjusted families. Those we will let you know we're not eligible, but if there is something else going on, they will be enrolled into Inc. one way or another. So go ahead, next slide. So it starts with what we call the health story. That is our assessment, okay? The care integration managers launch those out or they're automatically launched and then they will help and assist if, if needed with the family if they are unable to get it completed. Um, once the health story is completed, an interview is scheduled by the care integration managers and the family and they start building that care plan. Any urgent needs are met right away at the very beginning on onset. It's If there's a food insecurity, there's no food in the house, they're gonna lose their homes, that those types of things are handled immediately. Uh, then it goes over to our social worker. Next slide. So the care manager uh, does the initial enrollment. They do the reassessments, the development of the care plan, and they can communicate with referring providers or schools. Uh, um, the, the care plan is then sent to the social worker who reviews it, makes any adjustments, and assigns a, a member of the care, care management team. A community health worker is always assigned, but we do have other members, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Next slide, please. So the community health worker's role is to coordinate resources, keeping in mind that the immediate needs were already sent out, okay? So there might be some secondary needs. You know, is there an issue in, with the education system? Do they have an IEP? Um, is there a legal need going on? All of that gets coordinated with the family. We give them the, the information they need to reach out and obtain those services. If they need assistance, if there's a barrier such as literacy or language, we will work with them to help get those. We'll be on the, a third party on the call to help them get the assistance they need. Um, next slide, please. These are the other two members of our team and it's, it's really kind of special. So we have a child life specialist. Now, most of our team does not, they're not patient facing, okay? They're not family facing, but our child life specialist is. So if there's a need for her to go do a visit, she will go do a visit. It's a unique role. She handles a lot of the emotional needs, the uh, you know, a new diagnosis, explaining that to a five-year-old, uh, you know, chemotherapy, what's that going to look like to, to a small child? And she does it through play therapy, art therapy, all the, a range of different things. But because children don't do well with Zoom calls, she will actually go visit them in person. Um, the family support specialist, she's our educational expert, okay? She will work with families on understanding an IEP. She'll work with the schools to understand the needs of the family. She's very much involved. Uh, she's been doing it for years um, and, and she just knows exactly what she's doing. So I'm very proud of these two members as well as the community health workers. Next slide, please. So here's the impact of ink, urgent resources. So say you see a patient today and you find out mom can't afford food and she gets referred to us, she will have the food pantries uh, phone number, you know, within that within that day, um, empowering families to take charge of their own de destiny. Basically, it's saying, okay, what are your goals? What's you know, we all know what we think is important to them, but it might be something different within their own home. So we do allow them to say, hey, you know, I really want to focus here. You know, I really want to focus on securing stable housing right now. That's the most important thing to me. So we work to help them be more involved. Um, it's a massive amount of resources in, in Monmouth and Ocean County, Monmouth County especially, and it's just a lot to navigate when you're already dealing with a medical issue in the home already. Um, 
Medicaid assistance. So Medicaid, sometimes it falls off. Sometimes they forget to renew their, uh, their uh, paperwork for Medicaid. So we will actually walk, walk them through that process as well. We've had situations where one sibling's on Medicaid, the other sibling lost the Medicaid. So we help them kind of reestablish that insurance coverage um, so that they can continue to get better access to healthcare. Uh, school support, we do help families, as I said in the last slide, face the challenges in the school system, like, like the IEPs. Next slide, please. Natasha, okay, so sorry, I froze there a little bit. Gotta love Zoom. Um, community health collaboration. So this is this is kind of piggybacking off of what Dr. Carey said about working in silos. We will work with you. We do case conferencing with providers. Um, you know, we'll do case conferencing with school systems if a school nurse would like an update. Um, it's about tying us all together so that we can kind of wrap ourselves around this child's care as a whole. I mean, we all know better nutrition leads to better health, better stable housing leads to better health, less stress leads to better health. So it's all about wrapping ourselves as a group and, and in collaboration with each other around this child, but as well as the family, this really is multi-generational. I can't help a five-year-old with food without helping mom and dad with food. So it all kind of ties together to just improve the, the wellness of the family unit as a whole. Um, Medical support, we assist families in navigating medical procedures. That's that child life piece, right? It's, it's how do I explain to my child, um, you know, a sibling passed away? How do I explain to my child they need to get chemotherapy today? You know, these are big, big topics that we as adults sometimes don't even understand. So helping the kids kind of navigate that and, and work through the system that way. Um, our child life specialist is outpatient. It's usually a role you see within the hospital. Um, so it's really unique within Inc. to have this available. Um, here's a little bit of some success stories. Legal assistance. We, we helped a father going through a difficult divorce where there was mental illness in the picture. There was abuse of the children. There was so much going on and he could not afford a lawyer to represent himself. So we did connect him with some legal aid to help him navigate through that. He was a single father, had custodial custody of his child, but it was just so much to handle. The child had a medical diagnosis and he was just flustered. I think I spoke with him for an hour and a half, two hours, just trying to kind of help him navigate. Uh, food access, this is probably one of our biggest ones, which is sad to say, but it is. It's the majority of our, our kids are going through food insecurity. So we work with you know all the, all the local food pantries, the biggest one being probably Fulfill. Um, and they have amazing programs over there that they can connect. Uh, to the families as well. Uh, collaborative network. I mean, we we collaborate with as many pe people as will, will have us, to be quite honest with you. Um, we're not a competing organization really with anybody. So if they're not eligible for our program, we will find a program they are eligible for. I mean, obviously we have the Medicaid criteria that we have to follow, but you know, maybe they don't meet it, but there are other programs out there that can do what we do. So we kind of refer back and forth. Um, it's, it's kind of neat to see that actually working in reality. Um, next slide, please. So right now, this is our current caseload. We have 1,268 kids. It's current as of this slide. We have a few more now. Those are our SIL ones and CMOs. So those are ones we've assessed. They're doing fairly well, lowest need. The CMO is obviously a care management organization. If they're in there in a CMO, they can't be with us until they discharge. Um, so we do follow the CMO kids, and when they discharge, it's we're trying to become a part of the transition plan for that CMO, and we do keep in touch with them, and they kind of tend to right right away enroll into Inc. so they can get continued uh, help. Um, our ACMT is our advanced care management team, our community health workers. Uh, they take on the more complex needs, the twos and threes. Um, we have, you know, about split half and half on twos and threes, but they all get the same type of care. They all get that commitment and that once a month call, more if it's needed. Um, they're free to call in if they have questions. They get uh, emails with resources. They update their care plans with the, with the community health workers. Um, and you, you can see our disenrollments year to date are 23. So it's fairly, fairly low, a 2% rate. Uh, next slide, please. I am turning it over to Dr. Wallach. Here you go. Okay. 
Thank you, Jennifer. So my name is Melissa Wallach. I'm a pediatrician um, at Hackensack Marine Health, and I work in a practice located in Neptune, New Jersey. But prior to that, I was also in a practice um, in Asbury Park, and um, our practices have now merged together. Um, my administrative roles are as the director of medical education for the SG Medical School program at Jersey Shore University Medical Center, as well as the doc director of quality improvement for the pediatric primary care practices um, across the network. Next slide, please. So a little bit um, dive into our practice at Neptune. Like I said, we were formerly two separated practices that have now merged together as of January of this year. Um, we currently have three physicians, one advanced nurse practitioner. We have three uh, certified medical assistants, uh, two front desk staff, one LPN, and one manager who is also a certified medical assistant. Uh, we have more than 50% of our practice is Medicaid, um, managed Medicaid based, and about, I'd say, 30 to 40% commercial insurance. We do serve a very diverse population, um, both uh, socioeconomically as well as um, from many different backgrounds uh, and with multi uh, languages um, spoken. I would say the most common secondary language would be Spanish. We do have more and more Haitian Creole speaking and Portuguese speaking patients these days, and we do have a few Chinese speaking patients. Um, we do have um, uh, healthy Steps, as we were one of the um, sites for Healthy Steps, but in the current moment, our Healthy Steps um, person has has left the practice. We're awaiting a replacement, and that was um, a licensed clinical social worker, which um, was a program that was an integrated program like this one, but focused it instead of this program, which focuses up to age 21, only on um, zero to three years of age. Um, and what we have seen through um, the integrative model of Healthy Steps, as well as the Inc program is that over time um, through the pandemic, we um, have a, a large increase in need for connecting folks with mental health providers, specifically with developmental pediatricians. Um, we've seen a lot of the social determinants of health um, come up, for example, needs for transportation to get to medical appointments, food insecurity, um, housing and it, it issues. There's a very long wait um, for housing, for Section 8 housing, a lot of, um, you know, uh, limits there. Um, clothing needs, diaper needs, um, mental health, um, mental illness, not just in the patients, but in the family members as well, um, as well as substance use um, in a lot of our, a good number of our adolescent patients. So, so these are some of the things that have sort of come up. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'd, I identify myself as a physician champion for this program because I do think that um, what Dr. Carey alluded to as well as Jen was that there are many great programs that are around and we're working in silos and we want to connect the dots and we're the primary medical home for our patients as the pediatric primary care provider. But we really need to know what's going on outside the office, like, you know, what's happening in the schools, what's happening when we send them um, to the food bank, when we send them to the Madonna house, when we send them to all these different places, like, and how, and how, you know, making sure that the patients are getting what they need. And so we know that we take care of the babies from birth when they first come to us um, so that we have that, that, that um, benefit of time and trust that we have established with the families. And so, um, you know, it's nice if the families hear about the program from someone that they know that's taking care of their child from the beginning, you know, we can educate them about it. And then and then if they get um, a phone call from someone from Inc. or if they do, you know, scan that QR code to start the interest form that, you know, this is coming directly from, a, a um, you know, a person of trust who is looking out for not just the medical, but the overall well-being of their family. And so um, so that's why, you know, we want to sort of get the word out there to all of you guys on the call today about that. And, um, but, I, but I can't do this alone. And um, I have to give credit to my, my personal staff in my office who, um, who, who's a big help to this and, and, and our other offices in the network that have been making um, referrals to Inc. And that's you know, the, the front desk staff to hand out the, you know, the flyer if I may forget to, to give it to the parent in the room. My um, office manager has been um, very involved in connecting um, to the folks at Inc. as well as um, we all, all worked very closely with our Healthy Step specialist. Um, don't know where the slide just went, um, but <laughs> let me see if I have it on another. Uh, sorry, it's coming. My connection just went out. Oh, 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 is it there? Okay, sorry, because I, I had it. Oh, sorry, I had it queued up. Um, all right, sorry, there it goes. Um, you know, to 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 take care of the work, it takes it takes a, more than just the the 
the doctor for this program to work because you have to make sure that the patients um, are getting the interest form to fill out and then following through with, with the staff. Um, so after they fill out the, health, um, the interest form, they would do the health story, which was alluded to, which is a more complete picture of what is going on with the child, it includes both their social as well as their medical complexities. So for example, their medical history, the social determinants of health, which I alluded to before, the transportation, food insecurity, uh, mental health, um, developmental health, as well as school needs and um, trauma. You know, sadly, we, we do have uh, patients that have suffered um, you know, loss of parents through, to, through violence, um, a sexual assault, and um, intimate partner violence in the home. So all of these um, you know, are, are important factors that, that are told in the story. Next slide, please. So what, what we do here is we're connecting the families to these resources, and if they do get tiered, um, like was mentioned on the prior slide, they could get connected to the advanced care management team, which includes the social worker, the child life specialist that Jennifer uh, alluded to, as well as community health workers or a family support uh, specialist. And basically the point of this is to let the family get what they need outside of the medical home. Um, and often, as we know, we're, we're, we're ready to see that next patient. So we, we may not have the time to make that phone call to make sure that they're connected to these services. So it's nice to know that there's a team out there to help close those gaps for our patients. Um, and this program, again, is to focus on prevention, early identification and treatment of these concerns. For example, the challenges getting uh, a child diagnosed with autism, whether it's um, a medically complex kid that has congenital heart disease and is being fed by a G-tube and has a trach, um, whether it's um, social issues, the, the mom temporarily is unhoused um, and uh, doesn't have a, way, uh, a car to get to, to um, their appointment. So all of these things, we wanna try to hone in on them, connect our patients to resources as best we can. And the, the program manager at Inc. Can, can do that by having a relationship with, with myself and my office staff. So we get to know each other and help each other out to say, hey, you know, um, have you heard back from this mom? You know, hey, doc, I want to let you know about this family. And um, like, was me like was mentioned earlier, we want our, the families to learn how to navigate themselves. So this is the point of this is to, to connect them to resources, but also to teach them how to do it, um, you know, on their own for the next time. Um, and um, I believe that is my last slide. So I'm gonna hand it off to Dr. Atienza. Hi, my name is Dr. Kristen Atienza. I have an independent private practice in Neptune that was first started in the 1970s by my parents, Dr. Cesar and Dr. Helen Atienza. Of note, my mother is retiring officially this year, unfortunately. So it'll just be me and my um, older sister, Dr. Kim Atienza Molino, who takes care of the adult patients. We have about um, 2,500 pediatric patients coming from Monmouth and Ocean County to our practice under Medicaid. Uh, we already know, thanks to my colleagues before me, that the INC program brings together both families, doctors, and community-based service providers with the main goal to ensure that kids receive all the different types of care that they need. For many years now, I always wanted a, a social worker in my office to talk to my patients and my families because uh, just like you and me, we've all been so busy trying to take care of the patient's medical and behavioral issues, but we, I never really had much time to talk to them about their social issues. So a simple question of how are you to, your, to the parent would open up a whole bunch of problems and I learned all about all the parents' hardships. I asked that to my mother about a week ago, how she was doing, and I couldn't believe that uh, she, I was so shocked to hear that she was moving from motel to motel for about a year with her kids. I also asked the same question to one of the grandmothers in my office. And it was I found that she was the sole caretaker of all her grandkids because the parents have left. I feel that participating in the INC program, that the, both the provider and the uh, patients benefit from it. As provider, um, I could treat the whole patient, not just the medical and behavioral issues, but I can also treat the social issues too through INC. Luckily through INC, they provide a certified social worker. They have a community health care worker. They have um, a family support specialist. And they, if necessary, they have a child life specialist. Each provider um, introduces the INC program to the patients or families in a different way. What I usually do is during all well and sick visits, I introduce the INC program at the end of the visit after all the concerns are answered. And 
the next slide, the next slide, please. I show them the um, the QR code with the picture of the ink program. And I feel that they're more likely to answer the questions after they scan the code. Um, and the, uh, the slide that you see with the um, QR code is both English and Spanish in my office rooms. And I just feel that you have to help the patients open it up and do it and they're, they're really able to do the program. Each physician gets a care integrated manager and mine is Samantha and she's amazing. She helps me with all the patients. And, um, oh, I think there's something, my, my slide didn't come up. Natasha, okay. Anyway, Samantha is amazing. She's readily available by phone and by email. And she she's actually the one that sends me the health stories through the secure portal. I use Proton Mail, which is free for you to use, but um, you can also use your hospital email. This slide here is showing all the different questions that the parents and the patients will be answering through the INC program. And if you could see, it includes the Pediatric Psychiatric Collaborative, CRAFT, and even the, the uh, ACE program. So all eligible Medicaid children will get evidence-based screens done through the INC program. Once I get the health story, I download them into my EMR. And then when the patient comes into the office, I evaluate the health story with them and I see what they need. Uh, for example, um, last week when I did a health story with a patient, I, I, I rooted with the patient and the family. And I found that the PSE 17 questions uh, gave her high risk. So I brought her in and I found out that she was depressed and that the dad had actually passed away. But the good thing with ink is that she was able to get counseling and psychiatry through them. Other examples that ink has helped my patients are that a lot of mothers come in needing housing and food, uh, food insecurity. They need food. So ink provides that too, housing and food. There are many other services that ink provides, for example, transport to the, to the doctor's offices. Um, Jennifer Sharp also went over the legal representation for the patients that needed help for the difficult divorce. Also the patients who are autistic when they're in the hospital, if they need comfort care, there's many, many, many services that they provide through the ink program. Um, the last slide that I have I'd like to discuss is reviewing the health stories, this slide with the family. You can actually bill for the service. Uh, if you look at uh, the first two SIL1, um, they mentioned that that's how, when the patient's stable, they really don't have much going on, but they're able to watch them. SIL2 identifies the child having multiple sector needs and functional impairment. So when the health story comes to you and it, it shows that there's an SIL1, you could bill the G9920 modifier 33. If the health story shows that the patient has a two or three, you could bill G9919 modifier 33 and Medicaid went from $29 to $35 and you get paid at least once a year. Um, overall, I do appreciate the ink program. It allows me to uh, treat the whole patient, and I feel that patient families can get the care that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Atienza. And this last slide is just a visual following up from what Jen mentioned, what Dr. Atienza mentioned, and Dr. Wallach in regards to how you can refer patients to NJ Inc. So if you just scan the QR code, we also put our um, website address on here as well and a direct phone number if you have more questions or you would like more information here is the information you can reach out to and at this time I'm going to turn it over to Sarah so we can open up any Q&A. Yeah, I actually messaged Natasha we can lead it together. Um, so some great questions came in already during the presentation that we answered. Um, so if it, just to reiterate um, there was a question asking are families seen by specialists outside of the HMH network and Jen, if you want to add to that, to your answer. So yes, the, we, we can take a child from any doctor that refers to us, whether they're specialist, PCP, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But I want to highlight too, that we also take referrals out of the school system, educational programs, that type of thing. So it doesn't have to be a physician. Just know that health story will get back to the PCP for review, wherever it starts. Thank you. 
And Dr. Carries, if you want to talk further about sort of the geographics of NJ Inc. and what are other options for folks that might be outside of the Mammoth and Ocean region, that would be great. No, thank you. So as I stated, this is a pilot program. Our hope is that if we can show the benefit, it, it will become a statewide program. We're in year five of seven. Um, so we're coming up to the seventh year. And we're working with state Medicaid to look at what, what pieces or what parts of the program could really be spread throughout the rest of the state. But currently the project is only for the 150,000 uh, children that live in the two counties of Monmouth and Ocean. Thank you. Okay, awesome. And we, we have another question. Is there, I mean, how can a facility become part of your resources? So Jen, do you want to answer that one? Sure, absolutely. We're, we're discovering new resources every week. So all we need is for your information to be sent over to us. We also do participate in allowing you all to come in and do in-service instruction for our team. So we identify what candidates are best for your resource. But really, we just need the information. So I can certainly share my email address and you can send it over to me and we'll we'll get together with you after the fact. OK, awesome. Thank you very much. And Ms. Nicole says that she would love to connect. So we'll make sure we get Jen's information over to you um, to connect. So thank you for that. And Dr. Carey, I know you expanded already on um, the program, how we're going to be able to expand it to any other counties. Did you want to elaborate on that more at all? We had another question that came in. Um, well, I, as I said, I, I believe this is a program that needs to spread to the rest of the state. I think you know, Medicaid provides tremendous services already for almost over half the, over half the children in New Jersey are getting their health care insurance needs through Medicaid. So it's a huge number of families that have these additional sorts of services. And Medicaid has been a partner from the beginning with this. The, the whole payment structure is uh, based on uh, their giving additional monies to pay for the community health workers, et cetera. So our hope is that we'll have the metrics and the measures and the outcomes to be able to show that this should be a long-term new addition to the way that care is provided in the state. Currently, it's just Monmouth and Ocean County. As I said, this is a pilot. We have a Luckily, seven years to work on this, so we have had uh, pl plenty of time to figure out uh, how to make this work. I think uh, we've learned a lot along the way. There's no question that the for health to be available and grow for families, that it's, it has to be a partnership with the community. Uh, as Jen said, and we've talked about, we need to be able to have the family be the center of all this, but to have it all work together. It doesn't, doesn't work for the family to have to figure out how to navigate the schools and navigate mental health and navigate the autistic services and navigate the mental, the healthcare system and the, the, the food area, but particularly if they are having language difficulties or they have other sorts of barriers to getting, getting those sorts of services. And if, and if the families are having tremendous needs themselves, if the parents have you know, healthcare needs or mental health needs, it's very difficult for the child to get the kind of care they need if the families are struggling just to survive on their own. So again, they need to be a two-generational holistic approach. And I think we're, we're showing that with the outcomes that we're, we're producing. I think families have very much benefited, really enjoy and, and, and gain a lot from the services. Uh, nobody drops out of the program once they actually get involved with us. Uh, it's been a very affirming from that perspective. So we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still, we still need to expand to a lot more families. One of the reasons for this call was that we'd like to have two or three or 4,000 families involved, not just a thousand that we have now. And that, that means we hope to have folks like you on the call. Think about us, uh, think about us with the families that you see. You can call any of us, uh, myself, Jennifer and Natasha, if you have questions or comments. And we, we need to make this work. We think it's important to families and we appreciate your your interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carries. And another question came in, how do we get the referral form with the QR code? If you would like to send us an email, I'm trying to see if I can drop um, our information in the chat. We can definitely get materials out to your site. And then if you just, if you need more, you can just contact us and follow up. We can make sure we can get you all the material, all the ink flyers that we're going to be sending out to everyone. 
I, I see in there, there's a question from uh, Lisa about um, that this is a great program. It should be available for everybody, not just children with Medicaid. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, and there's many more families than just Medicaid families that have needs. However, this particular project is uh, supported and paid for by Medicaid. It'd be wonderful to be able to take the gains from this program and, and talk to the commercial insurers about how they might expand what they're doing for families also. But currently it's a Medicaid project. And, uh, can I expand on that a little bit, Dr. Carey? So sure. we, we are strictly Medicaid, but we do have resources available if they are not eligible for us because of that. There are other programs out there that do similar work and we refer them directly to those programs. One of them is even within the BMA. So we do everything possible to get these kids help, whether they're eligible or not. Um, to speak on the resources, if they're not eligible for our program, but there's an immediate need, my team knows as just a customer service uh, type action, send them the resources, <laughs> you know, get them at least the immediate stuff done and help them find a program that's actually, that can take them. You know, it, these are kids, they're fragile, fragile little beings who want to make sure that they're taken care of. Thank you, Jen. We have another question that came in. How long do you work with the families? I know that can vary. So one of our speakers, did you want to chime in on that? Sure. So as long as it's, ne it's necessary, if we take a child, a newborn in, and they got they are, have needs that go up and down and fluctuate all through their life, we'll stay with them up to the age of 21. That's not the goal. I mean, the goal is obviously to get them stable enough where Awesome, thank you. And I see another question is, can you provide a list of programs, resources for non-Medicaid patients? Yeah, this comes from Alisa, who's also not in Monmouth and Ocean County. Alisa, if you could just contact us uh, offline, we can we can connect with you and talk more about that. Awesome, and I'm gonna just open it up if there's anyone else on the call have any additional questions for any of our speakers? Just double checking. A lot of people are coming in saying thank you. Okay, awesome. Well, if we do not have any other questions at this time, I just would like to take a moment to thank all of our speakers for being here today. Um, thank you very much for your time. And we really appreciate you all for joining in this afternoon. And please, if you need more information, please feel free to reach out to us and we can get materials out to your site. And we thank you for your collaboration. Oh, we got a couple of things coming in. Uh, Armilas wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Atienza. She says her patients give great feedback on her service as a provider. And Diane Burdett said, thank you for the information. Hello to Dr. Carries and Melissa Cavazuzas saying thank you from a lot of our partners on the call. So thank you for joining today.